six days in and there's no sign of a miracle. Families are stuck in purgatory, waiting for answers that still haven't come. Nobody's giving up hope here. Nobody's stopping. The work goes on, full force. These are real people. These are, you know, my neighbors. And Montreal-born trauma surgeon Dr. Howard Lieberman has been working on the pile since Thursday. We're going 24-7. No one is stopping. With 149 people still missing, including four Canadians, the most difficult moments have come when families have been brought to the site. When you're down there and you hear the sounds, you smell the smells, and you see with your own eyes in real life what it looks like, a lot of things become a lot clearer. Just outside the perimeter, we met Fernanda Figuierdo. On the night of the collapse, she convinced her boyfriend, Eric DeMora, to stay at her house instead of returning home to his 10th floor apartment in Champlain Towers. Probably he will arrive at home, take a shower, and die. It was a miracle. For families of the missing and for survivors, grief and shock are tinged with anger. How one building can go down like that? Like a bomb, looks like a bomb. The cause is still under investigation. Photos obtained by the Miami Herald show the deteriorating concrete under the building's pool two days before the collapse. In April, residents were warned that structural damage had become significantly worse since a 2018 inspection and would require $15 million worth of repairs. There are at least 115 buildings in the Miami area approaching their 40-year inspection cycle. I think the big question now is for those buildings from the 1980s that are sort of a unique typology. Uh, there was like a, a rush to Miami, a rush of development during that time. Development that included the now collapsed Champlain Towers, where each day of digging through the rubble reveals only heartache. When we talk about the three million pounds of debris that have been removed, it's actually being hauled away in dump trucks under police escort. They move down these streets in convoys. They're headed to a warehouse where that debris can be subjected to forensic analysis in hopes of finding out what caused the collapse. Donna? So much work to do, Jackson. Prosco in Surfside, Florida. Thanks.